You know, I was having a conversation with a buddy of mine recently, and so often I feel like, especially like just with the way the social media works and the way that, um, you know, content works where you, you sort of highlight the best parts of everything. And, you know, it's, it's not often that you talk about maybe some more of the negative parts of being a software engineer. And that's not to say like, I don't want to dissuade anybody, but I think it's, I think it's worth having maybe an honest dialogue that there are some, some things to consider that it's not all sunshine and rainbows and candy and fat checks. Although hopefully some of you get those fat checks and whatnot. Um, but that it is, you know, there is stress and there is anxiety and, you know, what a lot of my colleagues and myself at time feel and why that, you know, why that is. So let's go ahead and talk about some, some more of the, um, negative things in software engineering. You know, I should, I should start by saying that I, I don't want this video to be one of those things where, oh, I wanted to be a software engineer and then Dylan shit on my dreams. That's not, that's not what I try and do. What I'm trying to do is if you, if you have unrealistic expectations about what's supposed to happen, right. And that, um, you know, how your life is going to go, how your job is going to go. Then when you fall short of those, it, it's that much harder. Um, the reality is, is that I, I have a lot of pretty much all my friends nowadays and colleagues, I guess colleagues would go without saying, but um, all the people I associate with are for the most part software engineers are in the software engineering space. I no longer have people in my life who aren't in that space that aren't family members. Um, the friends that I had in high school, um, you know, besides Matt who did a coding boot camp and runs his online businesses and like and YouTube channel. And uh, so he kind of gets some of this, but besides him, everybody else in my life is a software engineer other than um, women I would date uh, typically. And so I'm surrounded by it nonstop. I have my YouTube channel that's about software engineering. I have my Facebook group that's all about software engineering, a podcast about software engineering. And one of the things that's kind of un untalked about is about how nobody can see themselves being a senior software engineer for more than five years. Uh, and I, I say that because, you know, as a junior engineer, you go and you're like, or aspiring engineer, you're like, this is all I want. This is oh, oh baby. You know, like <laughs> that's, that's the excitement. And I, I, I remember it so clearly. And I still have that. Um, but I, I definitely can agree that five more years of doing the same thing I'm doing now would be a disappointment to a degree. And, you know, a lot of developers, and I, I think some of it stems from a love of coding. And that may sound weird to you. Well, why would you want to leave like the dev space to go into like a dev management space if you love coding? Well, just because you love something doesn't mean you love doing that something for a living. And, you know, for me, I love coding at work. I love coding outside of work, but I love coding outside of work more than I love coding at work. You get what I'm saying? And I think a lot of, uh, a lot of the developers don't like what it comes with that, that part of the job because it's a very stressful job. Um, anyone who tells you being a developer isn't stressful is, you know, one of the few, uh, people that I don't think, um, maybe, you know, fall into this category, but I said by and large, and I say this by the way, as somebody who has a very low stress job, I work fully remote. I've been doing it for over a year. Um, uh, my company is ranked or my organization, I should say is ranked in the um, top 30 best LinkedIn and best, you know, fortune 500 or fortune um, magazine companies to work in. So it's like, you know, good benefits, 
good this, my team, I love the people I work with. But even still, there's a lot of stress and anxiety that go along with it. Um, it's a very strange role. And I, I can't really, you know, I've only had one real career in my life, and that's always been development. Um, you know, I don't, I guess other than delivering pizzas, I've, I've, so here's a fun fact. I have delivered pizzas for almost twice as long as I have worked as a software engineer. Let that thing sink in a little bit. Um, I say that because my, um, uh, you know, sometimes the the women I meet and date and the people I interact with, all they know is like software engineering Dylan, right? YouTube Dylan, this Dylan. They don't, they don't, you know, they don't know the history, right? Like, um, but one of the things is sort of that you'll find strange at times and may add to that anxiety is that like, and stress is that you know you might have a team of four developers but you might have 12 supporting team members you could have a tech lead a director a senior director a qa manager qa a business analyst a scrum master um you know and the list goes on but really like they don't do anything if you don't do anything <laughs> so um but it, it's sort of strange because there is this um of all the developers i know there's a like oh the good old days like before they were developers and like they didn't have to study outside of work and put in this extra effort or they um you know they didn't have this feeling of imposter syndrome or they left it at the office right so like one of the things that's you know i remember distinctly sitting down with a friend of mine and there was a guy um garden a gardener and we're just looking out you know we're in the the kitchen area and we're just looking at him. The guy had his headphones in and he's just, you know, doing his thing. Seemed to be in a decent mood. Wasn't too hot out whatnot. And we both almost simultaneously said like, man, don't you miss the days where like, when that guy's done with his gardening job, he doesn't go home and think about gardening. He doesn't, you know, I mean, like he doesn't, it's not, and not to say that there's anything wrong with this or either way, but like he turns off and like, I, I think about it from my pizza delivery days. I never once went home from Domino's or Papa John's or Rizzo's or Z pizza where all these pizza places I worked at never once did I go and be like, got to up those pizza skills. <laughs> like, God, you know, I didn't, I left it there and like, and I was done with it. And it's, um, I mean, it, it is, what it is. There's trade-offs for both obviously, but it's a, um, it's a world that is very real in the sense of, or like, these are situations that are very real. And, you know, a lot of developers do suffer with imposter syndrome and stress and anxiety. And I think, naturally being more to generalize here i think the average dev being more introverted has more anxiety because introverts typically have more anxiety um and then you you know you deal with the fact that there's no matter it's just a high pressure job like on a team of 20 with five developers or a team of 10 with you know five developers you're, t you're talking about millions of dollars and salaries and benefits and servers and stuff like that and that, that can get to people um you know but when i when i talk to my colleagues and a lot of them are maybe upset a lot of them are i want to say depressed uh generally speaking most of them are are uh are um, fairly smart and fairly aware that their job stresses them out. And so they, they do what they can to deal with it, which we should talk about a little bit. But I would say nine out of the 10 developers I know, if you were to ask them if they wanted to be a senior, that are senior software engineers, if you were to ask them if they wanted to do this for five more years or they wanted to go into a more managerial role or a less code hands-on role um that's what they want to do and it, it's 
you know, it's it's kind of uh, it's interesting. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Um, I kind of fall into that category. I like to progress my career very rapidly, and one thing that I've been sort of uh, stuck in the last year is like this is the year where I've made the least amount of progress as in my career that I've, since I've started it. And that's not to say that like that's bad or good, but it is something to be aware of and at times frustrating. Um, you know, so some some things to consider as you're going and you're, you're um, managing your stress and anxiety and you're trying to enjoy your, your job and, you know, be happy with your job and things like that. Um, be aware, like be aware that these are, you know, so often, um, and I'm guilty of this. I, uh, I'm fairly confident this was what ended up a relationship of mine. It's like, you just, a certain generation is all about like bearing your feelings and like swallowing them and just dying early. Don't do that. Uh, so <laughs> that's something that I've been working on uh, a little bit of being more open and, and, um, transparent with myself and with others. So just be aware, um, manage these, manage the anxiety outside of work and the stress outside of work that, that way that your overall stress and anxiety is lower for, you know, what your profession is. So what I mean by that, well, one thing that you could handle pretty easily, um, once you've, you know, is your finances. Okay, cool. What eliminating, not living paycheck to paycheck and eliminating that stressor is one of the best things that you can do for your mental health where you're like, you've eliminated the money aspect of life. You know, you can need a job and paycheck and whatnot. So do things like six month uh, rainy day fund, lower your cost of living, eliminate all debt. These are all things that I've, I've done to help me with my own sort of stress and anxiety around the workplace. And that mean that also helps with that imposter syndrome where like, you're like, Oh, I'm always, you're always worried about losing your job. Well, if you're prepared financially to lose your job and, it's not as bad. Uh, so lower that and then uh, manage it in other ways. So it's things that I do that help is um, I try to lower my caffeine intake because I've, I've noticed that my anxiety goes up the more caffeine I have. Um, I also um, I also try to exercise regularly, eat a little bit better, although I, I haven't been lately, and then uh, meditate. So find some things that work for you when, you, when you're doing that because – um, regardless of where you're at, there's always going to be stress. And there's always going to be anxiety. And that's just the nature of the world. That's not even so much the nature of being a software engineer. But sometimes I think we paint this picture online that you just go into a cubicle, you sit there, and you, you, know, you do stand-up, and then you code, and like everything's great. Um, and it can be that, but there's a lot of stress and anxiety that go with being a developer. And I think sometimes we don't communicate that well in our videos and like, you know, it's just a little bit darker at times than that. And it's a little bit more realistic, right? It's not this, it's not this, um, you know, happy go lucky picture all the time, but it can be, it's, it can't, it's a, so to summarize, being a software engineer was the best decision I've made in a very long time, if not the best one. And all the sleepless nights, all of the tears, I don't think there was any blood, but if there was all the blood <laughs> um, and all the um, grinding that I had to do from sleeping on a floor to, you know, having a, being a, a college dropout and having a, a job that pays six figures with great benefits. I, I Allows me to eliminate my debt and buy a house and have a future and plan for retirement. Best decision I ever made. But it is hard. It will be hard no matter where you're at. And, you know, keep that in mind. Set realistic goals and, and have realistic expectations. So with all that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I uh, have some courses in the description below. Check them out. Hook me up. Subscribe. All that good stuff. I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Don't forget to check out my latest course, the 100 Front End Interview Questions Challenge to make sure that you ace those front end interviews. Smash that like and subscribe button, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.